We've spoken quite briefly about ninjas throughout the Japanese History Explained series, and for those of you who have seen all the content, you'll know that information on ninjas is certainly hard to come by. After all, ninjas operated in secrecy, usually from the shadows, infiltrating social groups, and assassinating targets all under the cover of stealth. Naturally, this would make it difficult to gain an understanding as to who they were at the time, let alone 600 odd years later. Perhaps the mystery around ninjas is what has us so fascinated about them. But there are a few more fascinating than one known as Fuma Kataro. Now Fuma Kataro wasn't actually his name, but actually a title given to the leader of the legendary Fuma clan, who was said to be a small group of ninjas that operated in the region of Kanagawa, in the Kanto region, under the orders of the Hojo clan, a clan who claimed a good region of Japan after the death of the great unifier Oda Nobunaga. What was special about the Fuma clan was their tactics in guerrilla warfare. Unlike the ninjas who were said to assassinate their targets through deceptions and infiltrations, the Fuma clan were a little more brazen and were said to opt for a style of warfare that would see them taking on larger forces than their own by means of sabotage. They would be more sporadic than the average army, using hit and run tactics and lying in wait to ambush their foes. They were said to attack enemies whilst pretending to flee, sometimes even luring enemies into traps. They were also known to ride on horseback, sometimes rushing the enemy from their blind side and using the speed of horses to make swift assaults. The Fumukotaro we'll be speaking about in this video is said to be the fifth leader of the Fuma clan. Little is obviously known about him, but some sources indicate that his name was Kazama, although there doesn't seem to be much evidence to prove this is an absolute truth. However, for the purpose of this video, I'll be referring to him as Kazama, so as to not misrepresent the other Fuma Kataros of the Fuma clan. One legend has it that Kazama was born to a human mother, but a demon father, an Oni, as they say in Japanese meaning a supernatural ogre or a creature. Some say that the genetics he received courtesy of this creature is what gave him his supposed ferocity and sheer size. In Hojo Godaiki, a lone surviving historical document belonging to the Hojo clan in which the Fuma served, Kazama is actually described as being close to 7 feet tall, with hulking muscles and a malicious grin. He was also said to have sinister slotted eyes, and that his voice was so deep that if he yelled, you'd have heard it from nearly 5 kilometers away. Kazama was responsible for leading a special forces unit of about 200 men for the Fuma clan. They were known as Rapa, which loosely translates into something along the lines of battle interrupters. The Rapa were organized into four groups with a dedicated set of men who harnessed certain skills that were required for certain missions. First you had the brigands, for general melees and fights, but then you also had the burglars, for high profile heists that required their utmost stealth. Then you had the third group of thieves, who ranged from the common pickpocket to lockpickers, as well as the naval team in the fourth group, who I guess you could say were more like pirates than anything else. But what makes Kazama stand out in history? Well, it's said that in 1580, the Takeda clan, under the leadership of Takeda Katsuyori, was battling the Hojo clan for control. The Fuma clan were deployed, but given the numbers that Katsuyori had, it looked like that not even the ninjas could do much to stop him. But that's where you'd be wrong. Kazama waited until nightfall and quietly traversed the waters into the coastline of where Katsuyori's camp was based. Whilst most of Katsuyori's men were sleeping, the Fuma clan attacked, spreading panic and fear throughout the startled camp. Crazily enough, the Fuma clan was said to have not done much fighting here at all. They used fire and smoke to confuse Katsuyori's men, amplifying their panic and driving them into a state of madness. They began hacking at each other in the commotion, killing their fellow comrades out of sheer terror, for they could not see their enemy. The Fuma clan was set to disappear back into the waters, leaving a devastated army that was set to deal significant blows to itself. 
Another legend that comes out of Kazama's life is his supposed rivalry with the other legendary ninja, Hattori Hanzo. In many works, they are usually portrayed as being each other's arch nemesis, and there's even an interesting legend about their final battle. For those of you who have been following the series, you'll know that a man named Tokugawa Ieyasu would eventually come to power over the entirety of Japan, and in 1590, he declared an all-out war on the Fuma clan. Tokugawa even went as far as to supposedly send Hanzo Hotori, a ninja who had become a part of his service and one of his most trusted allies, to seek out Kazama and kill him. The legends have it that Hanzo Hotori hunted Kazama for years before he eventually cornered him at an unnamed inlet in Japan. Using small boats, he and his ninja crew were said to quietly row up to the coast to surprise Kazama. But little did they know, they were playing right into Kazama's hands, for he had dumped oil all along the coast. As soon as Hanzo and his men landed and hopped off their boats, Kazama lit the trail of oil on fire. There are some accounts of Hanzo and Kazama doing battle in the flames, hacking at each other as the land burned around them, but none of this could actually be proven. In another legend, it's said that Kazama defeated Hanzo Hattori, but was shortly captured by Tokugawa forces afterwards and immediately beheaded. However, again, this is all just speculation, as a good ninja wouldn't leave vital information lying around for us to find all these years later. Still, it's fun to speculate as to who Kazama actually was. Do you think he was real? And if so, what was your favourite part of his story? Let me know in the comments below, and also let me know of any other Japanese figures you'd like to see me cover. And as always, don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.